Okay, so welcome back to this next video. So, uh, in the previous video, what I did is I, uh, well, firstly I started off with a bit of a discussion about the L-infinity space, uh, the LP spaces, to remind you. Uh, and then what I did is I said, let's define this set S, which is going to be the countable union of these TNs. And we define the TNs to be the sequences of rational numbers up to the nth term, and then after that it's just zeros. And But the first n terms can take on any value values uh, within the rational numbers. Okay, so the first thing we want to do uh, is prove that the each of these TN sets, for any n you like, which is a natural number, i.e. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., I want to prove that this is a countable set. And then what I want to do is prove that S from that, I want to use the, that fact uh, to prove that S is a countable set. Um, okay. And then S is going to be our set that we're going to use to show that uh, the metric space LP is separable. Okay, so TN is uh, TN is um, countable is the first thing we have to show. Okay, so first thing we want to show is uh, what I want to show you is that if you have two sets, let's say uh, U and W, U and W are two sets. W are two sets. Okay. Uh, what I want to show you is that if U and W are both countable, so let's say they are both countable, I want to show you that U cross W is also countable. So this implies that U cross W is countable. And the way that you do this is if you just imagine um, if um, taking the Cartesian product table, okay, so if U, what U is countable, then we can list out the elements of U. So we can list out U1, U2, U3, U4. You can, uh, you can subscript all the elements of U with a natural number, which is the natural number it's bijected with. U5, U6, etc. And you go on. And similarly, if W is countable, you can list out W1, W2, W3, W4, W5, etc. And then when we take the Cartesian product, we get W1, U1, W1, U2, oh dear, missed the comma, W1, U3, W1, U4, etc. I won't go any further. And then on this next line, we have W2, U1, W2, U2, etc. And then on this final line, we have W3, U1, etc. Okay, and the way we're going to count them, the way we're going to prove that this set, that this huge great new Cartesian product uh, set is countable, is we're going to use Cantor diagonalization again. Uh, we can, what we need to do to show that this set is ca uh, countable, we need to biject it with the natural numbers. So we need to biject it with the natural numbers which are here. So this is the natural numbers down here. One, uh, two, I should put some set brackets there. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And they go on. Right. So I need to find a bijection between this set here, which will uh, such that every single element of this set is assured to have a natural number ascribed to it. Okay. Uh, and the way you do this is just using the Cantor diagonalization argument. You give this one uh, the number one. You then go on along here. So you go along the diagonals. That's why it's called Cantor diagonalization. This would one would go to number two. This one would go to number three. Then we go down here onto the next diagonal. Uh, and this one would go to four. This one would go to five. You see, the problem is, uh, the, the reason you have to do it along the diagonals in this way is if you just start counting along here, you'll never end. You'll just continue on going like on and on and on, and you'll never get on to row two. So you have to go along the diagonals in this way in order to assure that you will actually get through every single element of this uh, of this um, of this great big Cartesian product table, and that is why. Um, that is why this is going to end up countable, because every every element of this table will be bijected with some natural number, and this one will go to seven, etc. Uh, so you will get to every single um, every single ordered pair in this Cartesian product space. It's, it will be in some diagonal, and you will eventually get to that diagonal because uh, in each of the diagonals there's a finite number of elements, so you can, can you can finish, basically, you finish each diagonal. That's the difference between doing the diagonals and the rows, or the columns. 
so that you'll never ever finish if you start with doing it each row at a time. You'll never finish the first row. Whereas because the diagonals are finite, you will finish the diagonals. And that's why it's such a clever way of doing it. So if you do, uh, if you do Cartesian product two uh, countable sets with one another, uh, then you get a, another countable set. Now by induction, if u cross w is a countable set, then if v is another countable set, then u cross w cross v is another countable set. The reason being that u cross w is a countable set, therefore if you cross it with v, which is another countable set, then u cross w cross v is a countable set. So basically you can get that any finite number of Cartesian products of countable sets uh, is going to be countable. And that is why these T5s, uh, sorry, these Tn's are countable, because effectively what they are is uh, they are uh, they are the Q Cartesian producted, so the set of all rationals Cartesian producted with itself uh, n times, and where n is some finite number. So you're basically you're, each of these is you could uh, each of these is effectively you can view it as an ordered pair. Yes, it's got this tail end of zeros, but uh, to specify each sequence individually, all you need to know is what are the first n digits. So indeed, you could set up a bijection from this set Tn to the um, to this Cartesian product space of Q with itself n times, and each one of these would have a unique sequence corresponding to it, and each one of the sequences would have a unique uh, n tuple of rational numbers corresponding to it, which is just the n tuple of rational numbers at the start of the sequence, because that's the unique bit of the sequence. The string of zeros is consistent between all of them. Okay, uh, so basically there's the same number of elements in Tn as there is in this um, in this n times Cartesian product of, rash, of the rational numbers, but because the rational numbers is countable, we are doing a finite um, number of Cartesian products of countable sets. So by this induction here, Q cross Q is, is a countable set, just by this proof that we've done here. Then because Q cross Q is a countable set, then if we cross it with another Q which is countable, we'll get another countable set. So by induction you can continue on and say that for, all, for whatever n is, uh, this is going to be a countable set. So that is why uh, Tn is countable. Okay. Now what we want to show is that if we union up a countable number of countable sets, that that is also going to give us a um, a uh, countable set. And the argument again is a Cantor diagonalization argument. So if we have S, which is the countable union, n is equal to 1 to infinity of the sets Tn, then uh, why is this going to be a countable, um, going to be a countable, uh, countable set basically? Well the reason is that we could again draw out a great big table. So we could start off with the set T1. T1. Uh, now, because each of these Tn's is countable, what we can do is we can subscript each of the elements of T1. So, if we um, call each of the... Uh, okay, let me start again, let me start again. So, remember what T1 is. T1 is the set of... Oh dear. The set of all sequences um, of... Uh, this, well, it's the set of all sequences where the first term can go can be any rational number. So let me write some of this down. So the first term can be any rational number, and then all the terms following that are just zeros, zeros, zeros. Uh, but the first term can be any rational number you like. Okay, now that is a countable set. In fact, all of the TNs are countable sets, is what we've just proven. So we can list out all of the elements in a great big long list. So let's do that. Let's have uh, little t t, and I'll put the 1 up here, that 1 corresponds to this 1 up here, to denote that it's an element of big T1, and then, oh, maybe I should, uh, but, and then down below what we'll put is another index, which will denote its, um, its ter it, the number that it is in this great big sequence where we biject all the elements of this with the natural numbers. So you'll have T11, T12, T13, T14. So these are all the elements of T1. So these are all elements of big T1. Okay? And similarly, you'll have. Uh, so we could put these in the first list of this. Uh, the first co uh, row of this. Um, of this table. So we have T11, T12, 
T13. So these are all specific elements of this set. Uh, and because it's countable, we can put them in bijection with the natural numbers. So we're just indexing these elements uh, with the natural numbers. T14, T15, T16, T17, etc. Now similarly, we can do this for the set T, big T2. Uh, and because it's countable again, we can have uh, the element little t, which is an element of big T2. So I change this upper index to 2. And then it's the first element. And then we have the second element of this, the third element, because they again are countable. They can be, because again, big T2 is countable. So I can put it in bijection with the natural number. So I'm labeling all the elements of big T2 um, along, uh, with an index of the natural numbers. Sorry about that, that should be a 4. Uh, T25, uh, T26, T27, etc. And it goes on and on and on. And then we can continue this process on. We can do T31, uh, which are all the elements of, let's put uh, here, these are all elements of big T1, these are all elements of big T2, these are all elements of big T3, and then along here we have the uh, natural numbers which are by being bijected with each set in turn. 5, 6, 7, etc. Okay, and then we go on and on, and we do big T4, and then we do countably many of those. So basically, in this great big union, we want all of these elements to be in there. So basically, now what do we do? And we want to prove that this great big table is countable. Well, we just apply the Cantor diagonalization argument. We want to prove that we can put this in bijection with the natural numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, etc. So again, we just apply a Cantor diagonalization argument. We say, start with this one, then go on to 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 this one, etc. Now, the problem is here, you will have to be careful because some of these sequences will be the same. The reason being, for instance, if I look in this set T1 up here, I will have, for instance, in some point, I will have a sequence which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, etc. So it's, the first term is 1. But if I now look at the set T2, I will also have that sequence in there. T2 is the set, remember, of all sequences Q1, Q2, and then 0, 0, 0, where Q1 and Q2 can take on any rational numbers. But what if I let Q1 equal 1 and Q2 equal 0? 0 is a perfectly good rational number. And then what I end up with basically is this same sequence again in T2. So somewhere this sequence will be in T1. I don't know what, uh, what natural number it will be bijected with. So I don't know what its little index is here. But it will be somewhere in this list. And similarly, T2, this sequence will again appear somewhere in T2. So it will be so, it will have some index. So basically you'll have to skip a few of them because you will get degenerate cases. Uh, so just like when we were proving that the rationals is countable, you will get degenerate cases and you will need to skip out a few if you've already seen them. Okay, uh, but that doesn't hurt our argument. So basically that is the argument that this uh, set, big S, is going to be countable. In the next video we will then show uh, that it is actually a dense uh, subset of the LP space.